In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Heaven is for the violent, but these violent people have to put down roots. Today at Mass, St. Paul doesn't hold back at all about telling us about his own sufferings for the Church. And what was the occasion for his diatribe? Well, he was upset at his Christians of Corinth getting carried away by whatever preacher saying whatever he wanted and leading them away from Christ. So St. Paul brought the argument down to the human level, showing that he had more credibility simply based on the fact that he had suffered a lot more for the church than those false teachers even dreamed of. And that's why the long epistle of today, St. Paul goes on and on and on about all his sufferings for the church, which is definitely edifying. It just gets a little bit monotonous. So why does the church give us this epistle to meditate on at the beginning of the penitential season? And the answer is because Lent is going to be spiritual training camp. Christianity is not for the weak. The kingdom of heaven is violent, and the violent bear it away. Matthew 11, verse 12. So why do we need the violence? And the answer is because the enemies of God have a strong claim on our souls. And we don't beat them just by be having a half-hearted desire to maybe be a friend of God. It's not enough. No, this has to be a total and all-out friendship for God. Another reason that the Church gives us this epistle today about St. Paul's sufferings is because our Lord said that unless you do penance, you shall all likewise perish. These words are not very accepted anymore. They are not pleasant to hear. Maybe people never even liked to hear them in the past, but before, people used to say that they knew these words were true. Unless we do penance, we shall all likewise perish. Something like a child getting disciplined by his parents and hating it all the time. But as a child grows older, he understands that his parents were saving him by not letting him, letting him get away with murder. The problem is that nowadays, people reject the idea that discipline is needed, whether for a child or for their own soul. And they assume that man on his own already has enough virtue to go to heaven. They assume that man already on his own has enough virtue to get to heaven. And that's been a long time heresy which has fought against the church, but now it seems like the church is finally going that same way. Just You don't need discipline or penance for your soul. You have enough grace on your own to get to heaven. Well, this is false. So Mother Church is looking out for us today by giving us this example of the trials of St. Paul. They're not just something to be admired, we certainly do that, but they also are a prototype for us. If St. Paul went through being scourged, if he went through being stoned, if he went, went through uh, suffering shipwreck, if he went through all these sufferings because, because he loved our Lord Jesus Christ so much to spread his church throughout the world, well, then the message is clear for us. Maybe I'm not going to be going through shipwreck, scourging, or whatever, whatever, being stoned, but all of us are going to go through some kind of suffering, and it is for the glory of God. It is something that unites us to his cross, and it is something that burns away the impurities in us. We need the suffering just as St. Paul had it. His sufferings are a roadmap for us. If he did it, we can do it too. Maybe not to the same degree or in the same ways, but he is still our model. Mother Church wants us to know that our Lord Jesus Christ is worth all kinds of sacrifices. In fact, if we are truly friends of Christ, we can expect to receive sufferings as he himself receives suffering. And here's a note of a caveat, a note of caution. 
don't always be looking for the suffering to come from without. You know, enemies of the church, enemies of my soul, enemies of the practice of the Catholic faith. A lot of times the enemies are coming from right within ourselves. And, you know, we have a, a tendency to kind of lash out at people. We have aggressiveness. We have um, laziness. We have selfishness. These are part of the seven capital sins. These are our enemies much of the time. And they are the ones that wish to steal from ourselves, steal from us, the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we must do violence against these enemies. You might wonder, you know, what is depriving ourselves of a little food? Or what is spending more time on our knees? Or what is coming to church to say more prayers? What does that have to do with um, getting rid of the enemies of my soul? And the answer is, all of these things are somehow a little bit against our will, a little bit against our comfort, a little bit against our convenience. And by practicing these things, a little extra prayer, a little less food, a little more time at church, by practicing these things, we are, in fact, doing violence on our soul. And we are burning away the impurities from our soul. And that is building up the life of our Lord Jesus Christ naturally, I went supernaturally, but um, very logically, that is building up the life of our Lord Jesus Christ in our soul. I'd like to make this humble comparison to an automobile. After a car gets a little bit old, the steering wheel will eventually pull to one side. I don't know if that's because of the way the road is shaped and uh, the steering wheel gets, eventually gets damaged, or because of a few bangs and dings with the car, kind of goes out of alignment. And so when you drive this car, you notice that you're constantly pulling the steering wheel a little harder in the other direction just to keep it going straight. Well, that's a little bit what our soul is like. We love God. We wish to serve him. We have our duties whereby we praise God. But quite often we are a car which develops misalignment because of our selfishness, our anger, our aggressiveness, these kind of things. We develop misalignment. And we need this compensation to keep us going straight. We're like a car that's pulling to one side, and because of the pilot, who is God, he steers us a little bit harder the other direction, and that's what keeps us going straight. Well, what is this compensation exactly? And the answer is penance. Penance is the compensation. It's pulling the steering wheel, steering wheel in the other direction so the car keeps going straight. It's not nice, it's not pleasant, and it's a disturbance. But we have to admit that if we don't have it, our soul will go off the road. Or as our Lord already told us, without penance, you shall all likewise perish. So why does the church also give us this parable of the sower who sowed his seed on this day? It's easy. To be a Christian, a true Christian, to be someone that bears up well under penance, to be someone that understands the need for going through hardship once in a while, just as a matter of proper formation, we have to be integrally, integrally formed Christians. That's why we have this gospel today so that we can bear with penance. And how do we bear with penance? By being truly formed Christians. We cannot just be a Christian on the surface. These are the seeds that fell by the wayside. We cannot just be a Christian who is a flash in the pan. That means we have all the beginner's enthusiasm, but as soon as we get a little trial, we give up the whole fight. Those are the seeds that... Um, these, those are the seeds that fell in the thorny ground. 
sorry, these are the, those are the seeds that fell in the rocky ground. We cannot be a Christian who puts his love for Christ on the level with his love for the world. Those are the seeds that grew up with the thorns. No, we have to be a Christian who is committed through and through. A friend of Christ in private and a friend of Christ in public. A friend of Christ during prosperity and during hardship. A soul which is patient and long-suffering along with Christ. A soul which rejoices with Christ. That is the seed that fell in deep, rich, moist soil. With this kind of foundation being in rich, moist soil, we can withstand all kinds of hardship, even though the hardship, even the hardship which is good for us, because naturally we are all very, very selfish. And this is the lesson that St. Paul went through. Because he was so formed in Christ, he could go through all kinds of trials and still love Christ more. This is a lesson that Holy Mother Church wants us, to, wants us to go through at this time of year. We love God, and now we're going to go to training camp for His glory. Let us be willing to accept the challenge. Let us will, be willing to bear the cross. And may Our Lady win for, for you, the faithful, all the graces you need to be a true, integral Christian alongside of Christ during this very necessary time of penance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.